Hi, I'm Jillian Reeves. I'm an actress, filmmaker, and mental health advocate. 70% of the kids in the system are there because of neglect. The other 30% are put through hell. We need your help. The movie uh, is amazing, let me just say. So it's called Sound of Hope. Uh, and it is about the foster care crisis. And I actually met, uh, well, while we were filming, there were some people from the California DCFS that de deals with foster care. And just, yeah, the, these kids have been through so much trauma, so many of them. And so, yeah, mental health is absolutely a thing that they deal with. We see that in the film. So that's depicted with some of the children in the film. The film is an honest, look at what it's like to foster, um, but it's also an amazing uh, just testament of what we can all do and what communities can do when they come together. So this little town in Texas called Possum Trot, uh, where the pastor of this church, a, a church called Bennett Chapel, his name is Bishop W.C. Martin, and his wife, Donna Martin, they uh, are called to foster kids, and then they get the whole community involved. So 22 families adopt 77 kids and they wipe out the foster care problem crisis in their town. Um, I play Diane, who's the first lady's um, sister uh, and the first one to adopt. So Diane, who's amazing, who I got a chance to meet in real life and just so humbled, uh, you know, and hopefully telling her story in, in, in just an authentic way. But she's a, she was a single mom. So she already had a daughter and she fostered and adopted three other boys. Um, and these were rural people. These were not people of a lot of means. Uh, and it just shows you that even though we might feel like we don't have enough to help or we're in this situation or that, just their story shows that we all can have a part to play to help the children um, that's in the system. Uh, so it's just an amazing story. They're amazing people. Um, it, it's heartfelt, but it's also raw, and it just shows the power of commitment and love and what can be done when we all come together. And, and I think that is the universal thing. I think that support structure, whether you're dealing with someone with a mental health issue, whether you're deciding to foster a child, or whether you want to reach out and just wrap your arms around people who are struggling, um, being together, helping each other, bearing each other's burdens, I think is how we get through all of this and how we make some meaningful change in people's lives. So I yeah. think in the film, like some of the kids had been in eight foster homes, 13, they had yeah. just been bounced around, uh, which also is traumatic in and of itself, right? And you know, um, one interesting thing is like they, they say in the film, about 70% of the kids are actually in there because of poverty related neglect. So, you know, even if we could just support struggling families um, to prevent their kids from being taken in the first place, like you could ease that low on the foster care system. So um, this film in particular is calling on like the churches, the communities to do just that. If you see a, a single mom struggling or a family that's struggling, like just figuring out what you can do to support them can actually alleviate a lot of the foster care issue. Uh, the other percentage, yeah, they've seen some awful things, right? Uh, some of the, and the kids that um, my character adopted their real backstory is, I think there was a five and a three-year-old, one was foraging in the trash trying to feed the other one. You know, um, the, one of the lead girls who's amazing, um, Deanna, she plays a, a character, Terry, whose mom, you know, she was, uh, sexually abused and um, mother had actually smothered her older sister, killed her. So yeah, these, so you have just a gambit, right? You have some that are just neglect from living conditions or, you know, um, bed bugs bitten up to like really significant abuse. Um, but you know, I think the beautiful thing about the film is it shows that like we can actually make a difference in, in their lives. Like, you know, accept that it's going to come with some responsibility, um, but that it's worth it because a lot of the foster kids end up, you know, homeless, being sex trafficked, uh, you know, th their outcomes can be quite poor um, if they are left in that system to age out of it you know, without, without support, a good support system and family. So it's such an important issue that affects so many of the things that everybody argues about right now, you know, whether it's homelessness or, or, or trafficking or these really big issues, a lot of it, the foster care system is like ground zero for that breeding ground, for, the, for those vulnerable kids to be affected. You can call me mama. Can you imagine our kids on their own? 
We can't just look away. The state ain't no family. Are you sure these people want us? I know they do. It's a huge story, right? 77 kids, 22 families. It's a, that's a big story. So I think uh, what the director, who's Josh Weigel, um, and writer Rebecca Weigel, they're a, they're a, they're a husband-wife team, um, I think what they really decided is like if we could make them care about, you know, um, especially this one particular girl and root for her, um, then she can sort of be just the face of so many of the children who had similar problems. So you can't, it's hard to tell this huge story, um, but if you can make them care about these characters and these people that you show, um, you know, you, you can see the bigger story through, through the few. Donna. I'm in here. Donna. They got a child for me. It turns out you can't wave too much trouble in front of my sister before she jump out of her chair and do something about it. And so I took one of my girlfriends, she's a, she does one of the film festivals in town, and uh, she was really stunned because it was like, yeah, it's a story about church, but it's not preachy. And then she was like, and and I thought, she said, I thought it would be a black story, actually. But it's not, but there's, yeah, there's a, there's a largely black cast, but it's not a black story. Yeah, there's faith in it, but it's not, you know, a stereotypical uh, Christian film or faith-based film. It's, it really does an amazing job of going, like, straight down the middle and just telling the story of these people, which is a universal story. And I think that's one of the huge strengths of it, honestly. Like, it's got no agenda. It's just telling the story of these people who have this huge heart for these kids and really wanting to make a difference, like you said, spread awareness to what's happening and really um, maybe turn people's hearts towards the problem to see how they can be a solution. So it's, that's, it's, they really, the beautiful thing is that the, we're, the goal is really for this film to be a movement to ignite people's hearts to say, you know what? I can have something to do with the solution. I can save a child's life. I can support a family to keep them from going into the system. Like, I can do that. Like, I have some power, especially coming together, to, to do a small part to change a life of a child. At the time period, was this? This is from the 90s. I was looking it up the other day, and Diane adopted the first kid. It was like later 90s. Um, but they were highlighted on Good Morning America, on Oprah. Uh, Walmart had like donated a bunch of things to them when, when their story was really in the press. Um, and, and they've just kind of kept going. So, but you know, of course, press comes and then it fades. And like, so the story is really like just the long suffering nature of, 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 of taking on this, this job, you know? But how doing it together. Um, which I think is with anything, together is much easier than trying to go it alone yeah. with whatever you're doing. Whether it's just raising kids, period, like you need the village. And right now I think we've become a lot, uh, really separated, right? And a, a little suspicious and wary and, you know, people don't want their kids outside or playing with each other. So really sort of strengthening um, communities. Yes. 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 All right, let me have a box. I'm at the only Jillian on Instagram. I will be putting out all of my updates for all of the programs we have coming up. Um, you can go to Angel Studios for Sound of Hope or Sound of Hope Film at on and all of these are Instagram. So it's Sound of Hope Film, Angel Studios, and the only Jillian, and you can get all of the information about these projects and what's coming up. We gotta work on this together. We your people now. And love never gives up. Hi, my name is Jillian Reeves and you just been buzzed. I this photo. This is this is my onset daughter and she made me this amazing present. And I love it so much. I love it so much. It's one of my favorite things. Thank you so much, Sabina. You are such a talented, beautiful young woman. Uh, just so blessed to be able to work with uh, so many.